How do you think my mom's presidency will be remembered? Short. Unless she wins the next one in which, you know, longer. History will remember your mother accordingly. I think she's, she's a terribly fine president. I think she's a truly awful president. She probably is a bad mother too, but you would know more than I. I would say that she should just resign, really, in humiliation. Do you think you had a crowning achievement as vice president? Well, I became president. Can we call that an achievement? I mean, an awful president she was working under, quite frankly. And uh, it's unfortunate that his wife tried to kill herself. That, Honestly, we all saw that coming. I think people probably called it at the wedding. She's going to try to kill herself. Did you vote for mom? Did I vote for your mother? <laughs> if I would have voted, it would have certainly been for your mother. What do you think she might do if she loses? She's been a little busy to have a social life. So I could see her going on a, a man bender. What was my mom's greatest achievement in office? She could wear a hat. Well, she's on a stamp. Bolivia got on board with Selena Meyer before the US. There's a Bolivian stamp that's very popular in South America in the philatelery societies. And I've had such a fine time while I've been here. Gosh, it's been fun. Daddy asked me to be his date for President Nixon's inaugural ball. And, um, because, well, Dad, your grandpa, uh, Daddy did a lot of um, business with B.B. Rebozo. So anyway, off we went. And I have to tell you, it was so exciting. It was so fancy. And all the ladies had poofy hair and um, sparkly dresses. I remember Trisha Nixon, who was the prettier of the two daughters, had some sort of a feather thing that was just, just exquisite. Catherine, can you sit up? Uh, well, uh, sit up? It doesn't matter for me. I'm not on camera. No, no, but I'm looking at you, and it's just so much more attractive if you're sitting up straight the way I am. It's better. Okay. No, I, Mom, I'm not trying to confront you. I'm just it, trying to ask you. It um, feels like a confrontation to me. Well, it's just unclear. I just want to better understand because I was told from multiple people that... Multiple people? That you just said it was Rosa who had an ax to grind with me. Well, and Dad. And Dad. Well, Dad has also had an ax to grind with me. OK. So they are both incorrect. Your mother went to a spa. OK, next okay. question. Um, what? Do you ever think about losing? Well, we have a highly competent team in Nevada, uh, Ada, with uh, Bob Bradley and Richard Speck. So I feel Splett. confident. I'm sorry? It's Richard Splett. No, it's Richard Speck. No, it's not. It's Richard Splett. <sighs> Catherine, it's not. It's Richard Speck. And now let's go to the next question. Why did you guys divorce? Oh, Catherine, I mean, honestly, is this sort of some sort of a psychological journey now that we have to take? Uh, why did we get divorced? Because we figured that would probably be the best thing to Is this going to go on like this? Is this what we're doing? You fall into love, and then sometimes you fall out of love, and then you just become uh, people who don't talk to each other. For a while, I thought it was my fault you guys got divorced. I wish you wouldn't feel that. Teenagers have angst, and they act out, and that can create a tension, sure. Um, is that the only reason that a marriage breaks up? No, not necessarily. Tell me about Monica. How is she different from mom? I guess they're the same species. Other than that, there's very little that they have in common. You want to know? Your mother is amazing in... Uh... Monica's very nice. So you served with Senator O'Brien. You served with Vice President Doyle when he was a senator. Yes. Tom James. You guys were all senators together. That's right. We were. So we have a long history. And uh, isn't it fun that we all get to, to be a part of American history together? I have great respect. Even though we may differ sometimes politically, and we may sit on opposite sides of the aisle. You know, you can, you can reach your hand across the aisle 
and, and, and hold hands with somebody. You know, I say that sort of metaphorically, of course, we don't really hold hands, but what I, I, I do mean that the symbolism of, of holding somebody's hand in, in communication, in, um, it, it's, a, it's a way to, to come to certain resolutions with your enemies. I'm not suggesting they're enemies, I'm just saying that it's been, um, it's been a, a, a wonderful opportunity to work with people that I like and people that I disagree with fundamentally. How did you make the decision to run for president the first time? Well, you know, I was um, a very popular, frankly, I hope that's okay for me to say that about myself, but um, I was a popular um, up-and-coming uh, senator, young young senator, you know. Uh, I'd only been in office one term, but people really... Um, I don't know, can I say sparked to me as a, as a candidate? You know, I had a, I, obviously I'm a woman. I don't like to tout that necessarily, but I am. Um, and I think people felt that it was, an, I brought new ideas and a fresh face and um, it was sort of the dawning of a new age. Amy, just two minutes. Catherine, I don't have two minutes. I don't have two seconds, and I'm sorry, but anyone else is going to tell you the exact same. No, everyone else has already spoken with me. Wait, really? When you're not working, what do you do for fun? Yeah, when I'm not working... Hmm. It's funny. Without actually being related to... Um, President Meyer, I do feel like I have a close relationship with her just because I've known her and worked so closely with her for so long. Um, really, almost as long as as you've been alive, you know, of course, you were, you know, you don't choose your family. So you were you were born into, you know, born into the family. And um, and she chose to hire me. So it's a different thing. I'm just going to ask you what you think of a few people in my mother's administration. It's a great opportunity. Thank you. If I could describe myself in one word, it's got to be one word, huh? Smart, tough, judicious. What do you think of Amy Bruckheimer? She's devoted to me. Um, I know she admires me very much. Amy? Just an empty vessel. Moist. So I had to clean that one up for you. Frozen. Tense. Cold. She likes to hear herself talk. Shrill. 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 I really like Amy a lot. She's great. I mean, so smart, so powerful, and so beautiful. She has a very shrill voice, but I've gotten used to it. Honestly, her voice goes to an octave that usually I just tune it out. The majority of my colleagues would probably describe me as effective. What? They did not say, did they say shrill? I didn't think we were dating. I thought it was more like a work thing, but there was definitely like a tension there. Oh, you mean, oh. We dated for a short while. She did not take it well when I broke it off. It was really just the one date, but I ended the date. How would you describe Gary Walsh? A kind person. Truck stop glory hole. He can do a handstand still and a cartwheel. So I think he was a cheerleader. Used. What do you think of Dan Egan? Douchebag. The other side of the glory hole. Prick. Shrewd. Arrogant. He's fine. He's very focused um, on himself. And that can work out well in political life. I think he appreciates that my winning gave him a second chance at a career. So I think he'll be forever in my debt for that. And good luck to him. Sometimes you just want to you know, slap the shit out of him, but he means well. What do you think of Mike McClintock? He loves his job. Do I have a philosophy as press secretary? I probably should. Mike is an idiot. It's amazing he got a driver's license. One of the most extraordinarily incoherent people I've ever met in my life. He has great taste in desserts. Sometimes, like in a futuristic, like a sci-fi movie, you'll see like a robot that's like the old version of the robot and you kind of feel bad. For that robot, you're like, why didn't somebody just put the robot down or like turn it off? Like that's kind of how I feel about Mike. He's a friendly guy. You know, I love Mike. Is this little movie gonna come out before or after he's fired? How about Jonah? Jonah Ryan is the congressman that the people of New Hampshire deserve. Jonah Ryan being elected to a public office just shows the depth of the idiocy of American people. I think my greatest strength is not having any weaknesses. 
Do you ever worry that you're too frank? Does a rattlesnake ever worry that it has too much venom? Sue? Sue and Kent are probably the two most efficient people working in the administration. You know what it's like having Kent around? It's like having a computer that you don't even have to turn on. He's a numbers guy. Robot. 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 Gray Elvis. Mr. Spock. An asset. Probably on the spectrum. Kent? Cunt. With a K. I don't think that he has emotions, although, oddly, I think he dislikes me. I don't even know if he's married. Kent always struck me as a man who just designed the atomic bomb and was a little disappointed at the way it turned out. It was somehow not, you know, big enough. What do you think of Tom James? Flesh-eating plant. Ben? A uh, bully. Waistline. He's ruthless. Just a bump on a log. A worrisome alcoholic. I think of him uh, like you might, the way you might think of a bulldog. A walrus in a suit. He wouldn't mind me saying that. Uh, the walrus might mind. Let me ask you a question. What's the best lesbian porn site? Uh, absolutely. My faith is very simple. I believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, God's Son, come to earth to comfort and love us. And what do you think of Gary Walsh? I think Gary Walsh can suck my dick. I think the best way to kill Roger would be to make it look like an accident. I mean, that wouldn't be my preference psychologically and mentally. I think I, I, I desire a really brutal death on my hands, but I can't, it, it would be it would be better to, to make it look like an accident. We know a lot of people in the military sector. If I could set up some sort of a hit. How did you get into politics? I was sort of a um, compulsive liar. I didn't want to get into politics. At first I thought business was gonna be my angle, but then I saw how politics can translate to, you know, sort of a bigger cash payout at the end if you sort of have more influence from within. So, you know. Running the long con. There's a movie uh, that came out. It's called Bullworth. There's a pretty uh, catchy rap song. It, it, it was a song called Ghetto Superstar. And there's one part where it says, my, my eyes are sore being the senator. And I was like, that's an odd rhyme. I loved being a senator, of course. I'm from Maryland. I grew up here. You know, I spent most of my youth here. As you know, I went away to boarding school. But beyond that, you know, and of course college, but, you know, I, I adore Maryland. And so being able to represent the people, the good people of Maryland, gosh, it's a wonderful state, and it's filled with so many interesting uh, people who, who do wonderful things, and I was so pleased to, to serve them. I worked with your mom in Maryland uh, when she was a senator. We bonded, and we used to like to drink, back when your mom drank a lot. Back then, your mom was loose and fun and jukebox Judy, you know, she'd go in and dominate the jukebox. I don't be accused of, of propagating my own origin myth, but it is as if a young shepherd boy put the shell to his lips and blew from the mountaintop. And I heard this single, pure, peeling note ringing out across the mountain range. And I went like this, I went, Tom James, that's me. What is that you say? Serve my country? Be delighted. That is, that is exactly what happened. It sounds improbable. Would I run for office? No. No, I would never run for office. I would, I would accept an appointment. Do I think that I'd run for Congress? Uh, I'm, well, it's on my vision board as, you know, a to-do. I'd be lying if I, if I said I wasn't excited about seeing the look on my first stepfather's face when he realizes that I'm a congressman. Look, I want to fuck the system. Not, not fuck the system up, but I want to make passionate, hard love to the system. What was your first job in politics? I was Paige on the floor of the Senate. Yeah, it was actually really fun. It was the late 70s, and uh, we used to go get booze all the time at the, uh, at the liquor store right across the uh, river there in Roslyn, and then come back. And of course, by the time we got back, we were really loaded. And then you had to fend off the senators who always wanted to bend you over, you know, bend over a page. That's what they always said. It was fun. My political beliefs, I believe that everyone should have the, uh, the freedom to uh, participate economically in whatever they choose to uh, participate in and are able to. I mean, of course, don't invest more than you can afford. Um, but right up to that limit, I suggest you invest all you can. Um, that's what makes this country great, and we can provide opportunities to help uh, make this country even greater by um, purchasing properties outside of this country. Um, and there, the, the sun never sets on the, the, uh, the British Empire, it was once said. And we feel 
that um, our companies and our umbrella, um, the sun never sets on our properties as well. You know, so some people say, you know, you, it's better to uh, beg forgiveness than to ask permission. Fuck that. I do neither. Could you tell my wife to come? That would be really great. Your wife hasn't come to visit you? No, not once. Richard is a great man. He is a great man and a good friend. He should never be in charge of anything. I think Richard's talents are best served in a number two position. As chief of staff, uh, I would say that I, I am in charge, like, you know, like a second, I'm, I'm like the Spock to Captain Kirk, you know? Is, is he second in command? I think he's second in command, so in that case, uh, yes. Is he second in command? He is, because then his third is Bones. No, he's the doctor. He he's the doctor, but then he'd go on land missions, and so he'd well, be he would third. Go on land missions, but that doesn't mean that he's third. Well, on, on Cat, he's third Kirk on is land one. is the thing. Kirk is one, then he's got Spock, and but then Bones. He seems to be more so. like he seems to be more like not even in the power structure. He's just well, kind of he's like part of the, the in like a naval fleet. Like even the doctor is part of. The well, I understand so that he would be part of the power like structure, but I'm just saying in thing, this particular one, we know. don't know where he stood. But like, if there's on 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 like a planet. Just like even, assume, I'd assume that you wouldn't be second in command, but out of three, like so, three out of three, you're still in the picture. You okay. know? Well, no matter what, he's the moral center. That's true. I mean, he would be the moral center. Thank, thank you. You know, a lot of things are new around here, but I'm sure it'll be pretty easy. And if you know, I'm sure there are people that can help me out. Wait, I don't know. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be easy. Hold your hand up and say yay or nay or. I mean, like every once in a while, some people come through and say, you know, there's a meeting tomorrow. You go to the meeting. You look around, you know, when everybody nods their head, you nod your head, and then you know, the meeting breaks up. Yeah. Everybody shakes hands like it went really well, so I don't know. Yeah, Honestly, exactly. I feel like it's been pretty easy. Yeah. Also, there's a ton of bathrooms here, so you never have to, like, double up. You're never waiting for Never one. waiting. Why do you want to be president of the United States? You'd be president. Everybody would be like... Oh, I wish I hadn't said all those terrible things about him. I mean, four years, if they make me fill out the term, four years in Congress, I go start being a senator for four years there and then presidency. Who should get credit for your victory? I mean, you want to be able to say that it's the people behind the scenes that lifted you up on date, but you know, I really pulled it out on this one. I think I really deserve the lion's share of the credit for this. I mean, all the pressure was on me. And I stepped up, and I won. So me, I deserve the credit. Personal sacrifices that I've made, uh, so I haven't been able to work as much on my puzzles, so a bunch of uncompleted puzzles on my counter and stuff. How would you describe my mother? Oh, wow. How would I describe the most important woman in the world? Um, she's beautiful, she's powerful, she's powerfully beautiful. She's, uh, her policies are amazing. What policies? Her political policies. She's a fashion icon, I'll tell you that much. Did you see her Vogue cover? I challenge you to think of one person who's been in the White House with as much style and grace as you or mother. Jackie O? <gasps> oh, that's right, she was stunning. Come on, Gary, she's not here. Tell me how you feel. I don't, I don't understand, what are you? They told me that it would be pointless to interview you. You would never tell me how you really feel about Selena Meyer. Who told you that? Who told who, who told who told who told you that? What do you mean how I feel? What, what, I don't I don't get what try and get what you're what, what are you saying? I'm saying I want to know how you feel. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. You're trying to get me to say something I'm not gonna say if you're a stupid little film. This is how I feel. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm start <laughs> I'm starting to go upset. Can I just? Can you just give me, sorry, can you just give me one sec? I'll be right back. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's <sighs> fucking not gonna say, I'm not gonna say anything about her stupid little film that's not true. What, she wants me to be on camera for the rest of my life saying bullshit about her mother that's not true? I've been with her mother for the past fucking 30 years. I know shit about her that Catherine doesn't know. And I'll tell you what's truth. Her truth is how amazing she is, how beautiful she is, how powerful she is, how she treats her employees with respect and grace. Oh, okay. I am happy to help. I think this is a great idea, by the way. Uh, you got a distributor lined up? Who's doing your financing? Um, I'm just kind of finishing it myself. Give me the one sentence pitch. The one sentence pitch? Um, uh, I, it's, it, uh, um. Is this, is this like for festivals or is it a, 
you know, is it a, is, is it a documentary feature? Is this like a like a wide release? Yeah, I think it's just um, it's gonna be what it wants to be. Yeah. Boo. Yes, I will be right there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't do this right now. But uh, if you find me later, maybe I can help you out. Have you thought about what you'll do if my mother loses? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't even understand why there is an election. There shouldn't even be a choice. Well, but wouldn't that be a dictatorship? Well, it's a much better idea ship. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> what do you think President Meyer's most important policy decision was? The Vanity Fair shoot. She said, just pick a designer and have time. And I left my body. I left my body because all of a sudden I was getting phone calls from everybody clamoring to do her dress. And I was able to go, she doesn't want you, Calvin. Uh, you're too bold with the patterns, Louis Vuitton. You're too weird, Prada. You say Laurent, you're my man. You know what my happy place is? Thinking of that day. I have this little kind of fabric from when I was a kid that I'll kind of, I'll bring out and kind of rub. And it kind of soothes me. Do I drink tea? Yeah. I just, sometimes I'll drink her leftovers. Where do you see yourself in 20 years? With the president? I do want to open a uh, an ice cream sandwich shop. I will stay with your mother forever. President? I haven't thought that far ahead. I'm so focused on the present. White House. The Galapagos. Um, I mean, just the yeah, president. Yeah, have it penciled in 2036. Uh, can just go the there. seat of but power. Two tickets. I don't know who those are going to be. Everybody I'm assuming by then. Saying, Mr. I'll, president, you know, be coupled up. This is the most important bill that yeah. has ever been signed into law. Just, I, just want, I just like to be close to the sun. Well, I have a very specific multi phase plan. What are the phases? Well, if I told you the phases then someone would know the faces and someone could stop me. Good try, though. Uh, do you have a cellmate? Juan, yeah, yeah. But it's all right, we're getting along. He's actually sort of sweet. What the fuck are you looking at? Sorry, you gotta keep that up. Hold on. I mean, come on. I can't believe they spent months, months looking for my decoy. I mean, she's not even in the ballpark. Dog park, maybe. Why don't they use someone like her, for example? Yeah. You know? <laughs> How easy is that? That's all you need. Right. The delegation from Pennsylvania could not arrive at a majority and hereby abstain from the vote. Pennsylvania was ours! Yeah. Okay? That's two abstentions. We cannot afford a third! Add haze to the enemy's list. And still no Jonah. All right, listen. When we win, I'm taking that Liberty Bell, melting it down, and turning it into a statue of Rocky Balboa stuck in his own dick! Oh, are you taking this elevator? Are you a member of Congress? Oh, no, no. Well, then either take the stairs or win an election. Oh, probably faster to take the stairs. You see what I'm dealing with here, so right? You didn't tell him that I'm taking his job yet? Nope, that'll be your first press release. You know, I don't, I really don't want this to become about ragging on Absolutely. Mike, but he's an utter disaster. Yeah. You know, okay, ma'am. Yeah. This is in the wrong binder. Here you go. Okay, thank Pretty you. Pretty straightforward, no surprises. Yeah, well, here's a surprise. It's from 10 days ago. Look at the top. Fuck see, me. See the, see God. the date? Yes, ma'am. That's the giveaway. So sorry. Look in the right binder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Heads are going to roll. <laughs> right. Yes, they are. They are. Hey, that speech raped my eardrums. When are you firing Mike? Already in motion. Mom's the word. Great speech, Mike. Thank you. Glad you're back, Aim. How would you describe your role in Jonah Ryan's campaign? That would be stupid question number seven. Let's move on to eight. What was Jonah Ryan like as a child? He was tall even as a toddler. I remember he was having trouble with clotheslines. He was a 10-year-old. He used to call him the Colossus of Rhodes. Leaning tower, a piece of shit, that kind of thing. Do you think Jonah Ryan will make a good congressman? No. And what is it that you bring to the Ryan campaign? Uh, oftentimes coffee 
donuts. I'll bring loose leaf paper, extra shoelaces. You'd be surprised how you could need a shoelace and no one has one. Right, but what are the intangible things that you bring? Yeah, oh, um, intangible things, like, like spirit? Yes, for example. That, that was my answer. Well, what do you consider his strengths? Well, I say his height is his main strength. His eyes never seem to focus on anything, which you know can be off-putting, which kind of gives you leverage in, in negotiations. A lot of people seem to find Jonah very authentic. Can you expand on that? Uh, well, I'm glad that's working. I find Jonah Ryan to be the most authentic person to ever grace the face of the planet Earth. Is that true? I think so. Where do you see yourself in the future? Uh, the possibilities are unlimited. You know, but Congress and Senate, then, uh, you know, dare I say, commissioner of the UFC. Have you ever lost a grandparent? All my grandparents are dead. Wait, um, no, one or two might still be alive. What about your parents? Uh, still very much alive, but uh, they moved to Florida, so, you know, might as well be dead. <laughs> Uh, actually, take that out because, uh, you know, Florida's still in play in the House vote. These precious moments figurines are a very good investment. This one right here cost $40. Now it's worth 75 <laughs> That's almost double your investment. Yeah. Yeah, I think that one should be worth, you know, close to a million by the time I'm 600 years old. Yeah! Tell me which one is your favorite. I think this, with this little alien guy here. Love, Barrett, all things. That's oh, what I forget. Well, you know? It's a bear. You have to look at the title. Okay. That really helped bring that moment together. Beareth all things. Yeah. You always see details that you've never seen before. You know, each one tells an amazing story. Just touch your heart. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. Historically speaking, if you could take a bullet for any president, do you have a favorite? Jackson. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Here. Want to know who we are? We are gentlemen of Japan. On many a bars and jar, on many a screen and fan. We figure in lively paint, our attitudes queer and quaint. You're wrong if you think it.